Circular shunts are rare in the pediatric cardiac ICU, but they can have disastrous effects on our patients, so it's good to know about them. We'll start with a single ventricle example. This patient has single ventricle anatomy with pulmonary stenosis and an open left ventricular outflow tract. Having an outflow from the heart to the lungs is necessary for a circular shunt to form. They don't exist in cases of pulmonary atresia. In addition to the pulmonary outflow tract, some other source of pulmonary blood flow from the systemic circulation is needed. In this case, a BTT shunt, because the patient has pulmonary stenosis and wasn't getting enough blood flow to the lungs from the heart. Let's follow the blood flow through the circulation. Blue blood enters the right ventricle and mixes with the red blood coming back from the lungs. The blood can then exit the heart either through the pulmonary artery or the aorta. Because of the pulmonary stenosis, most of the blood exits the aorta. The blood then has a choice. Some will go out to the body. The rest will cross the BTT shunt to be oxygenated by the lungs. This is normal single ventricle circulation, and this patient will be cyanotic, but will hopefully have adequate blood flow to both the body and the lungs. A circular shunt occurs when there is significant pulmonary insufficiency or regurgitation. Even if the valve is stenotic, if the valve doesn't close well, blood in the main pulmonary artery can backflow from the PAs into the right ventricle. So in this situation, the blue and the red blood mix in the heart, exit the heart through the aortic valve, crosses the BTT shunt into the PAs, then flows down the main PA back into the heart. Around and around the blood goes, never making it to the body or to the lungs. A circular shunt. There is no medicine to fix this. Surgery to ligate the main pulmonary artery or so shut the pulmonary valve would be required. This is why patients with Tetralogy of Fallot with absent pulmonary valve are essentially never born with a PDA. Having a ductus arteriosus in utero is fatal in this condition. Let's look at a two-ventricle circular shunt in Epstein's anomaly with pulmonary insufficiency. In Epstein's anomaly, the tricuspid valve is displaced and dysplastic. There is usually tricuspid regurgitation, and the right ventricle is small. In severe disease, there may not be adequate pulmonary blood flow from the right ventricle, so the PDA is required to remain open. If there is also pulmonary insufficiency, this sets up the conditions for a circular shunt. Blue blood enters the right atrium, and because of the smaller RV and tricuspid regurgitation, a substantial amount of that blood crosses the atrial septal defect to the left atrium. The blood crosses the mitral valve into the left ventricle, exits the aorta, crosses the PDA, flows down the main PA into the right ventricle. Because of the tricuspid regurgitation, the blood back flows into the right atrium to start the circle again. A two-ventricle circular shunt.